Well, hello, students, and welcome back. No, 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 you, you don't have to applaud. Even though you will want to applaud when I tell you what the topic is for today's lesson. Today's topic is everyone's favorite topic, and that's the topic of assessments. So today we're going to learn about assessments. Now something important to remember students about assessments is where it comes from. The word assessment that we use actually comes from a word that means to sit with, to come alongside, which is very different from the way that we think here in the United States about assessments. We think about assessments as something that we do to our students rather than coming alongside with our students. So I want us to remember that we need to rethink about, uh, we need to rethink on assessments and how we use them in the classroom. All right, so when I think about assessments, I think about two main types of assessments. There are summative assessments and there are formative assessments. And I know there's lots of other language that we use in education to describe assessments. Uh, yes, Bobby, you have your, you have your hand up? You need, you need to go? We just got started and we're talking about assessments and look, I brought a plan. Okay, all right, bring your cell phone. Bring your cell phone. All right, yes, yes. Put it, put it in the box. Okay, no, I understand, I understand. See you in a minute. Yes. Where was I? Oh, my plant. So when we think about summative assessment in the classroom, well then we can think about it in terms of being a gardener. So if I'm a gardener and I am gardening and I grow something beautiful like this, well then if I'm going to summatively assess this plant, then I can measure its growth. I could measure the composition of the soil. I could write down just, you know, visually what I'm observing, but I'm not doing anything that's going to really affect this beautiful plant's growth. But if I think about formative assessment, well then I'm actually going to interact. I'm gonna come alongside my plant. I'm gonna talk sweetly to my plant. I'm gonna fertilize my plant. I'm gonna water my plant. I'm gonna trim away the parts that need to be trimmed away to make my plant grow better. And so I can formatively affect my plant. Summatively, I can just look at it and make measurements. But formatively, I can actually affect change based on what I'm doing to my plant. Thank you, plant. I appreciate your help in this today. All right, so remember, we're going to talk about, we're going to focus on formative assessment, which doesn't mean that summative assessment is not also important. It is important. There are some ways that we can summatively assess at the end of maybe a unit of study, uh, maybe even at the end of the year with our state standardized tests. So when we think about summative assessments, I don't want you to think that I am being disrespectful today to summative assessment because I would never want to be disrespectful to any type of assessment. So when we're talking about summative assessments, we could talk about like maybe research papers or tests. We think a lot about tests. We think about projects, maybe a multimedia presentation that would give you an opportunity to demonstrate all that you know or all of the skills that you can do. And of course, maybe achievement tests. And we have all of our state standardized tests at the end of the year. Those are summative. But today I want to talk to you about formative assessment. So I'm going to ask uh, Peter, what do you think is the definition of a formative assessment? 
Yes, yes. Oh, so you think that it has something to do with uh, forming something, like with Plato. Well, you know what? You're not too far off. Because like we said with the plant, that we're doing things to, uh, to our students, that we're going to come alongside, and we're going to help uh, form them. We're going to help... Uh, expand their understanding of what it is that we're trying to do. So here is my definition of formative assessment. It is ongoing throughout, that means all the way through, Cindy, all the way through, throughout instruction, so the entire time I am teaching, I am formatively assessing my students. It's ongoing throughout instruction and it informs the teachers planning and instruction. So that's my definition of formative assessment. It's ongoing throughout instruction and it informs my teaching and my planning because I'm gathering information from my students. So Mike, what do we call the type of instruction that, or the type of assessment that is ongoing throughout instruction and it informs both the planning and the uh, teaching in the classroom. What is that? No, you can't ask Carol, Mike. Tell me what, what type of assessment is that? Exactly right. Ding, 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 ding. It is formative assessment. And I'm going to tell you, my teacher friends, that formative assessment, I believe, is the most important types of assessment in the classroom because it affects how a student learns day to day. All right, so how do we get to our formative assessments? Well, as you know from another lesson that I taught about writing objectives using the ABCD method, that when you have a well-written objective, it should be measurable. You should be able to determine whether or not a student has achieved proficiency or mastery of that learning objective. And so I would like to ask, uh, let's see, Jan, what is the first stop when you're writing a lesson plan? What is the first stop? N no, I I'm not talking about lunch. I'm not talking about where you stop for lunch and then you maybe use the Wi-Fi there to write your lesson plan. No, I'm talking about when you're writing a lesson plan, where are you going to get, where are you going to go for the prescribed curriculum? The standard. Excellent, Jen. Kiss your brain. Good job. So you would start with the standard, and from the standard, you're going to write your learning objective for that lesson. So my learning objective is using a Venn diagram, the student will be able to compare and contrast the events of the battles of Vicksburg and Gettysburg by correctly listing three differences and three similarities. All right, so that is my objective for a lesson that I'm going to teach. So when I go to teach this lesson, then I need to think about different ways that I'm going to ensure my students have the knowledge and the skills to be able to show proficiency in this learning objective. So I have my state standard that has to do with the Civil War, the battles of the Civil War. I have focused in my particular lesson on Vicksburg and Gettysburg. And then I'm going to uh, take them through the lesson process, have different ways of assessing them. And so this is maybe my lesson that I'm going to teach on this one. I'm going to start with an essential question. 
And by the end of my uh, lesson, I want to make sure my students can answer this essential question. Now, teachers, it is not an essential question. Oliver, Oliver, are you listening? Yes, thank you. Thank you. We're talking about EQ, not IQ. EQ, okay. That's an essential question. An essential question is not something like, was Gettysburg during the Civil War? Because that's just a simple yes or no. I want my students to think, so I'm going to ask them a question such as, why, uh, why were the outcomes of the battles of Vicksburg and Gettysburg important turning points of the Civil War? Okay, so that would be my essential question. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch my students in and I'm going to have some sort of an activating prior knowledge. So I might, as my students walk into my classroom, have a picture up, a, a painting that's projected that is maybe from one of the overlooks in Vicksburg, Mississippi, so that they can come in and they can see something about the geography of that area. And I want them to think about and be able to talk to me about uh, why it would be important that they look at and understand the geographic features and why they were considered during this battle. All right, after that, I would go into my lesson. I would have my I do, which is my uh, content presentation I'm teaching. And I would probably teach some sort of a mini lesson. And then I would get my students together into a we do, which is the guided practice. And then there would be the you do, which is the independent practice. Now, I'm going to tell you that throughout the I do and the we do, I would formatively assess my students. I would never stop while I'm teaching. I'm asking my students questions. I may have my students pull out their whiteboards. I may ask them some true or false questions and I'm gathering information. I might ask them to write on their whiteboard an answer to something that I, am, uh, I have taught and I want to reinforce. So I could use whiteboards that way. I can have my students do something like a uh, think pair share. Uh, where my students are going to talk to another student that's close by them. Sometimes we call them elbow buddies. And so I could have them do a think pair share. And as they're doing this, teachers, part of my formative assessment is I am walking around the room I'm looking at my students and talking to them. And if I hear that they're not on the right track or maybe, just maybe, uh, like Cindy and Bobby, they're talking about something else other than the topic at hand, well, then I can use it as management. But I'm going to walk around and I'm going to use proximity. And I'm going to scaffold as needed, or we could say reteach as needed. So this is what I'm doing as I'm having my students do a think pair share. And up here I can put for my Q and A. This can be uh, this can be verbal, or this could be whiteboards. So there's all kinds of things that we could do. Uh, as par far as our formative assessments as we're teaching. All right, so I've got my students, they're working together. Maybe they're doing a think pair share. Maybe I've got them working together, going through some text. They're doing a paired reading and then they have to pull out some information. The whole time that's going on, I'm not sitting at my desk playing solitaire on my computer. No, I am out there with my students. So I'm, I'm monitoring. Okay, Sam, Alice, are y'all, what are y'all coming up with? 
Tell me what you've learned from your reading. So I'm out with my students. And I'm going to tell you, teacher friends, this is some of my favorite way to teach because I get to go around to small groups or to pairs and I actually get to look in my students' eyes. I get to hear what my students are saying and I get to reteach at the point of need right then. So this is some of my favorite things to do using this proximity, this uh, scaffolding and reteaching as needed. And so what am I doing with all of this, Carol? What are we calling all of this? Exactly right, formative assessment, formative assessment. So I could do things like the Q&A, the think, pair, share. I could have my students uh, do something like maybe, um, I could have them do a, a two minute debate. I love that strategy with my students where they can do a, a two minute war of words. Which, which battle was more important? Which one was a major turning point in the Civil War? The Battle of Vicksburg or the Battle of Gettysburg? And so we could have a two minute debate over which one was the, uh, the most important battle for the turning point of the Civil War. So this is a strategy. There are all kinds of strategies out there to formatively assess your students. And so this should be ongoing throughout instruction. And of course, we know that all of this good teaching and all of this good formative assessment is going to lead to my students being able to have the knowledge to come up with three similarities between Gettysburg and Vicksburg and three differences about Gettysburg and Vicksburg. That's going to be the ending. This could be maybe even their uh, ticket out, this Venn diagram. Sometimes we call this an exit ticket, which means everything is over. This is the independent practice. And that's what the students will leave with, something like this. So this could be an exit ticket at the end. So we have gone through our lesson. We've looked at different formative assessments, uh, how we could teach this lesson, the steps of going through a lesson. And I will say at the end of of a unit on the Civil War, then there may be a summative assessment, which would be maybe a unit test over the Civil War uh, that our students could do. And that would be a way that I could summatively assess my students to know their overall knowledge about this unit that we just covered. But this is for our daily learning. These are our formal assessments for that. All right, so what I want you all to do now is I want you to do a strategy that is called Sum It Up in Seven. Sum It Up in Seven. I want you to, and this is a formative assessment for me, I want you to use Sum It Up in Seven, which means that you are to use seven words to summarize your learning today. So it needs to be a complete sentence and you can only use seven words and you have to use seven words. So let's see what you can come up with on the poster boards on your desk. All right, so let's see uh, what did Marsha and Greg come up with. All right, so Marsha and Greg, Thank you for working together on this. And Marsha and Greg came up with, let's see first, did they use seven words in a complete sentence? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, they did. And this is what they said they learned today. Assessments are like plants in a pot. Well, Marsha and Greg, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> 
Uh, you are right. I did talk about plants. I talked about summative assessments of where I'm just measuring. Maybe I'm making some observations, but I'm not really interacting with my plant, <laughs> which would be formative assessments. So yes, you're right. We did talk about plants today. Let's see what someone else came up with. Okay, Cindy and Bobby. Cindy and Bobby, let's see what you came up with. All right. So Cindy and Bobby came up with, let's see, first, did they use seven words? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they did. And their summary of what they learned today is that formative assessions should inform planning and teaching. Excellent, excellent job, that's right. Your formative assessments are ongoing throughout instructions and they should inform your planning and teaching. And don't forget, let's go back to the beginning and remember that assessment shouldn't be thought of as only something we do to our students, but assessment should be things that we do with our students and they should inform our uh, planning and our instruction. It should help us to be the very best teacher that we can be. So thank you all and uh, we will get back on our next lesson. Uh, Jan and uh, let's see, Bobby and Carol uh, and Marsha and Greg, if y'all could stay after class, I would like to see you all. So thank you.